Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. We keep getting more information about Pyro, for example, the recent lore article, and we are increasingly becoming aware that Pyro is going to be a very different place than Stanton. And while undoubtedly everyone will rush to Pyro for the novelty of it at the start, and many will occasionally make an excursion there for one purpose or another, only a minority will make it their permanent primary zone of operations. Those are the people I am calling the Pyro players. And in this video, I'm exploring what will be the characteristics of the Pyro player and hopefully cause you to think about whether you are one or not. And to preface this, I'm going to say that by Pyro, I am talking about the time of introduction at 4.0 plus a little to sort things out, let's say 4.2. So sure, player bases may change things entirely years from now, but that's not part of my scope of this video. And bear in mind that CIG wants the players to spread themselves around between Pyro and Stanton, and also within each one of those systems, because that allows server meshing to have the greatest benefit for increasing shard player counts. So Pyro not being for everybody is exactly what they want, and not a problem at all. And the first thing to ask about being a Pyro player is, are you ready for a challenge? Because Pyro, compared to Stanton, will feel like somebody flipped the hard switch on Star Citizen. And again, that's not a problem. It's a standard construct of online games that there are easy zones and hard zones. Stanton is one of the beginning planets and thus is automatically intended to be an easier place and may well become easier after Pyro is there to be the more difficult place. So Pyro is intended to be a hard zone and it should be utterly unsurprising. But hard zone is going to mean greater rewards, right? Maybe. Many games, for example RTS games, have the extreme difficulty levels be rewarding simply for the bragging rights of beating it at that level. And in some of those games, what makes extreme difficult extreme is the lack of money. I'm not sure what all the levers are that CIG will pull to make Pyro a more challenging planet, but don't presume that more rewards has to be part of the equation. Now. I'm sure some of you are going to be saying, well, of course Pyro is going to be hard because it's PvP. And while that may be true, I think you're giving yourself too much credit. The main reasons why Pyro will be hard mode will have nothing to do with PvP. If anything, they will make it even harder for people whose play style is constant mayhem for reasons that should become clear as I go along. First, let's start with the whole subject of consequences. In Stanton, you shoot up civilians and players and you get a crime stat and are denied entry to places. In Pyro, you shoot up civilians, we'll talk later about players, and you get bad reputation with the faction that they belong to, and when you go to certain places, bad things happen. So what's the difference? Well, where's the kiosk where you can use a crypto key to easily erase your bad reputation? There isn't one. Where's the place that you can choose to be sent to at the end of your play session so you can start the next one with a clear reputation? There isn't one. Where's the place where you can get sent to and do a few maintenance tasks or mine a few gems and get all your reputation back? So the first thing that makes Pyro have that hard switch turned on is that the consequences of your decisions will be long and hard to get rid of. Even a character reset will likely not do it. But you can still go wild around PvP, right, with other players. Well. I wouldn't be so sure about that. What we don't know yet is if I get a really good reputation with one of the pyro factions, let's say the fire rats, would they start to regard attacking me as attacking one of their own? Would I wake up in the med bed with a message that said, you were murdered by grief hobo 66, request retribution from the fire rats? Enter left bracket to accept, right bracket to decline. And by reputation, of course, I mean, or perhaps even more so have the option to front money from my own account for the fire rats to create an assassination or kidnapping mission against Griefobo 66. This concept, a level of reputation high enough that the faction at least partly starts to regard you as one of their own, is something that I'll be returning to, because what else would be the pinnacle of reputation with one of the gangs of Pyro? Again, I don't know if that's going to be the way Pyro works, but it certainly is in keeping with the lore and setting. And if that is the case, then before you as a PvPer decides to just pounce on some unsuspecting player, take a moment to consider, who might that player be connected to? So Wild West PvP may not be as common in Pyro as you think, which brings up the next big way in which Pyro will be different. You are going to have to care about local politics. 
because knowing who you are good with and who controls where and who will let you land and who will, you know, do this, I'm sure CIG will not hold the past against you, but the next time they decide to run a Xeno threat in Stanton, are you going to have to decide between participating in that and still having access to Ruin Station, which Xeno threat currently controls? Either way, best to leave your vintage CDF armor in the closet when you go there, you know. But I don't expect these things also to stay static. I expect a fairly common pyro global event will be for some other group, say again, say the fire rats, trying to displace Xeno threat as controllers of Ruin Station or some other strategic outpost. And then you have to decide. Do I stay clearer until the dust settles and see who emerges on top? Or do I throw in because it really would be better for me if control of the station changed hands? Or didn't? But if I do, I'd better hope to land on the winning side of that conflict, because if I don't, well, say goodbye to access to Ruin Station until some future coup. Now, bear in mind that the winner of any such conflict will need to be global. No being able to jump from a shard where Xeno threat controls Ruin Station to a shard where they don't. So in Stanton, you can care who is the Imperator or not. In Pyro, knowing who controls Ruin Station or a key outpost is not optional at all. All this ties into my third reason why Pyro will be hard mode, and that is the scarcity of support locations. So, let's do a quick inventory of where you can get help in Stanton. There are four major landing zones. Each of the planets also have an orbital cargo station. Each of the planets have five Lagrange points, most of which have star bases. There is Grim Hex, and there are by my count 56 name player accessible outposts in the various planets and moons, most of which have service providing landing pads. By comparison, Pyro has one barely functioning derelict space station and, per Todd Pappy at the last CitizenCon, 50 colonization-style outposts of unknown capability. And any of those might be locked out from you by your reputation. In addition, I think it's pretty safe presumption that Ruin Station and possibly other key locations will be camped by marauders pretty much constantly and on a level that will make the old Port Alisar campground pale by comparison. So, for example, thinking that you'd be able to approach in a heavily damaged and depleted craft hoping for a safe place to land at Ruin Station to repair, you may be in for a disappointment. And while we now have refueling in the Starfare, fuel was just one of the many services we got from these locations in the Stanton system. Let's go through them and discuss their pyro possibilities. First, HABs. Where can you visit and have be your login point set if you are unable to log out in your bed because your ship doesn't have one, or the ship that you did log out of in bed, say your friend's Carrick, isn't in the game when you return? Well, it seems reasonable that Ruin Station might have Habs, but what about the colonization-style outpost? Nothing in the toolkit of concept art had been shown would include anything that looks like an apartment block. Some of the teased concept art did include private bedrooms, but does not look like there are a lot of them. So I will make the presumption that if there is any habitation capability at all at the Pyro Outpost, which there may or may not be, it is restricted only to those people, again, with the highest reputation in the controlling organization. High enough that they would welcome you as one of their own as a guest and give you a guest orders. Two, the next is ship storage and retrieval. For this, you would need both hangars and some sort of equivalent of an ASOP terminal. Since Ruin Station at one time was a fully functioning station, I am going to presume that these are functioning at a minimal level there. As for the outpost, so far nothing in the tool set, the CitizenCon demos, or the concept art has quite met the description of either a hangar or an ASOP terminal. The CitizenCon demonstration outpost didn't give any clues since even in the friendliest example, the ship was landing outside in the fields. But still, if they allow a high enough reputation player as a guest staying there, they will have to be able to do something with their ship, right? So I'm going to guess that if your reputation is at that extreme level that it will let you have a guest house, they will also have a small hangar that can be only used for the ship you came in on. Number three, next comes medical. This involves both medical treatment for injury states and places where your regeneration image is stored. And again, there has been some concept art of a clinic entrance at Ruin Station, so it's fairly evident there is an intent to have a public clinic with the similar capabilities of stations in Stanton, but I can only imagine the horror show behind that desk. Now, when it comes to the larger of the colonialism-style outposts, again, we don't see a medical module in the tool set or in the concept art or in the CitizenCon demo. And that, on one hand, makes it hard to see a place like this being either capable or interested in running a public clinic. 
On the other hand, it is equally obvious that they wouldn't want to not have some approach for keeping their own people healthy and alive. Which then again gets to that question of whether, if you can achieve a high enough level of reputation, they do regard you as one of their own. At which point, again, they might let you into that back area where the med bed is. Number four, refining. Now I know you're going to say, we're at the expanse, but do we? Looking at the Q&A for the expanse, ship-based refining isn't going to be just a simple port of station-based refining. And looking at the roadmap, there really isn't a lot of work being done on it. And since it is not needed for Squadron 42, there may not be anybody available to work on it. So I'm not sure that it will make my 4.2 criteria because I doubt that they will hold back 4.0 for lack of the expanse refining. This outpost component, though, does look like it could be pressed into service with just a port of the refinery mining module, or at least until the expanse is available. Number five, reloading. The Vulcan is supposed to be able to make this available to us players, but again, looking at the roadmap does not give confidence that it will be done by Pyro or even anytime soon after. So that will again have Ruined Station and whatever outposts have landing pads. Also expect it to be expensive. While they may have a fine supply of basic ballistic rounds, if you want something particular like an uncommonly available missile, you may have to first arrange having it brought from Stanton yourself or by an org mate, possible with the cargo refactor. Number six, repair. We are expecting there will soon be the ability to strip hull material from one craft and use it to patch the skin of another. That will undoubtedly restore integrity and armor, but one would presume that it couldn't handle something like replacing a lost wing. For ships, that would presume the use of the Crucible, which is unlikely to be available prior to 4.0 or even as it appears nowhere on the roadmap. In Stanton, repair requires either a hangar or a landing pad. So that means yes for Ruin Station, plus I think a yes for more than a few of the outposts, although at hugely inflated cost compared to Stanton. I see outposts doing this on landing pads on the outskirts, most because it's an opportunity to be a money maker for the outposts. But what if you had a component destroyed, or that you want an upgrade to a ship component at these locations? If they have a replacement component at all, it will likely be junk from a derelict. So if you need a particular component or want a brand new one, you will need to be arranging for its procurement and delivery from Stanton yourself. Number seven. Now, I'm sure some of you heard me say talk about repair, refueling, and rearming as being vastly more expensive and thought to yourself, ah, forget that, I'll just do an insurance claim. Really? You will? Where? Because for insurance claims, you need not just an ASOP terminal and a big enough hangar, but also one more thing. You need to be in a place where the insurance company would feel comfortable delivering a ship to. Do you really think that an insurance company would feel safe delivering a shiny new ship to Ruin Station where the ruling faction Xenothreat is radically opposed to all corporations? Really? And the other factions aren't that much better, and the delivery drivers will certainly not have the kind of reputation with the outpost that would allow them hangar rights. So it is definitely possible, even likely, that the only place where you can do an insurance claim in Pyro is no place, and that getting an insurance claim on your ship means returning to Stanton. So is it all negative about being a Pyro player? Oh, by no means no. There's the pride of making it in the toughest of conditions. There's going to be a lot to be made in scavenging, marauding, and piracy. The heavy metals deposits, whilst not enough to keep amalgamated pyrotechnic making their debt payments, should be plenty for an enterprising prospector or mole captain with less overhead to make bank. And while everything will be expected to be expensive, the player providing those desperately needed services like fueling and desperately needed supplies like ammunition can't expect to be on the receiving end of those inflated prices. So while I have talked about the individual decision about whether to make Pyro your home, what about the decision of an org to become a Pyro org? How will organizing and running a Pyro org be different and what you might want to do in the highly likely circumstances that not all of your org members will want to make the long-term relocation step? That will be the topic of my next video in this series. But now for an update on the Grow the Channel ship giveaway. As of recording, we are approaching two-thirds of the subscriber goal and 56% of the membership goal to give away someone's choice of either the Anvil Liberator, the Ship Shipping Ship for Shipping Your Ships, or the Misk Odyssey Long Duration Exploration Carrier. Members are entered automatically, and if the winner is a member as of the publication date of the winning video and of the drawing date, they will win both of the ships. 
For everybody else, just be a subscriber and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the name of the switch that it will feel like was flipped for Pyro. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.